Good evening, everyone. I'm thankful for everybody that's here for this meeting. Again, to remind everyone that uh, when we have the uh, public comments, public comments are going to be uh, limited to uh, uh, 50 minutes, 15 minutes on one topic, and each speaker would be limited to speaking for three minutes. Other than that, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. It's, it's with uh, great pleasure that I would like to introduce uh, uh, Connor MacGyver, the gentleman sitting between John and Suzanne. He is going to be uh, our interim person right now for uh, is that right? As assistant town administrator. So if you have the opportunity, I think everybody here is, is met him, so we're all set. We're all set for the record. Moving on, we have appointments. We have a bid for the sale of the town property on map 224 lot 0060. And I, I got one, I got one bid. So you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. The record should show that Dan stepped off the board. This, these are sensitive to distance, so if you're very, I was far enough away that it wasn't picking up, so. There should be a check with it. I have a check here for $30. Uh, bid price is bid is $300, 10% is $30 to Christopher Peck at, at 83 Castle Rock Road, Barrington, and it's signed and here it is with you. Turn that over there. We only have one bid at the record. Show that, please. The next item is open the bids for the winter sand. Trucking, Stratford. I will. Is required to have a check? No. Okay, thank you. These are not required to have a check. Town of Barrington, eight do eighteen dollars and fifty cents per ton of screen wash sand delivered to the Barrington Highway Department. Smoke Street, and like I said, this is from uh, Scott Berry Trucking and Stratford. The next one is from R. Pippin and Sons in Sanford, Maine. R. Pippin and Sons. Uh, okay. They got Pepin Winter Sand, 4,000 4, uh, cubic yards at $6.75 a cubic yard and $27,000 material only. Nagway may, may be picked up by others. Uh, delivery only is 14,000 cubic yards at $5.75 and total of that's 23,000 and that's trucking only. So total is comes to 50 grand. And let's see, what else do they have for stipulation? Anyway, uh, yes, exactly. I'm not going to get my sandbox there. There you go. The last one is LCG Limited in Barrington. Uh, 4,000 uh, cubic yards of sand at $12.50. Total of fifty thousand. That's from LCG Limited. That concludes the bids. Yeah, Any discussion from the board? Barry, was Scott Barry told? Dan, can you uh, repeat Scott Barry? Is it more sandstone? 
Yes. Or sand. Screen, wash, sand, delivered. Or sand or wash sand. Though. It says eighteen dollars and fifty cents per ton, screened, washed sand, delivered to Barrington Highway Department at the, has a street address, Smoke Street. And, right. and, and uh, this is on a total of four thousand yards. No, that's he did by the ton. He did by the ton. Ah, that's why they're different. So he's going to be. Um, you have to convert. Half, half, it runs at one point five. I'm sure when it's being gets done figured out, they'll get back to us. I'll get back to John. But just so the board understands, they didn't all bid the same. Right. Yep. So, so uh, Peter will have to put them together. The reason uh, we expect uh, Peter for you to come back with an answer next week, or at least to send the answer if you're on vacation. Any more comments on the bid? Seeing no, we'll move to public comment. Oh, he, okay. I asked them. Uh, Did you have a comment for the bids? Well, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, the due date is 1031, all 4,000 yards, so the sooner we'll be on, the better. Well, once we make the decision, we can go from there. I believe at the last meeting we discussed having them bid due today and awarded next Monday so that Peter would have a week to review them and to reconcile differences such as yards and tons. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, public comment. Anybody have public comment? Could I just ask a question to Please. Peter? Uh, Peter, wouldn't it be easier if everybody was bidding either by the ton or by the yard? Yeah, they were, small, they were all supposed to bid by the yard. That's what the bid spec said. So I think that some, we've got to make them aware that that's the way we want it. I, I expect that we will make that point. Um, just for Peter's answer for those who couldn't hear on television is that we did require him to bid by the yard and one did not. Just, it was just a question. It just seems to Very good question. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree with you. Moving on, public comment, please. Or 
relocation or whatever it is the board decides to do. Um, I, I think it's incumbent on the five of you to have some kind of a plan going into the budget process this year. There's a fair number of voters out there, myself included, that are a little bit curious as to uh, where we see this going. Um, I would, I'd find it hard to believe that you'd be able to bond one project, whatever it is, and then in a short amount of time come back and bond another one. So um, I, I certainly hope that the five of you guys are prepared during this budget process to have some conversation to at least let the, the voters know um, what your plan is to uh, get us from uh, point A to point B in, in these three big projects and, and uh, live within our ability to uh, have budgets for, for the rest of the town. So thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for your very good question, Chief. To help me give you some answers on that, as you know, I've been here for about seven and a half years as a board member here and over the years we've had uh, numerous bonds that we, we've put out from uh, for the public to vote on starting all the way back for the uh, renovation just to make an ADA compliant back in 2002 and working year after year and then there were several uh, uh, <coughs> select boards along the way that have put information out there that at every juncture they came to the voters Barrington have turned it down. The latest one being the uh, the bank that uh, we put a proposal for the uh, last chair brought back there, Mr. O'Brien, and uh, the voters put it down. What our intentions are is that once we sit down to discuss the budget, we will in turn have that discussion. The board will have that discussion as to what uh, we think should be best and bring it to the voters and let the voters have a, uh, another crack at it. I really, really am sincere. I thank you very much for your comments because they're, they're right to the point. Now, we can, we can handle the ones for the police station and we can handle the ones for the town hall, but the library is, as you know, is a separate entity and that's where we'll have to go from there. Any other board comments? I, I just have a comment on it. Um, I, I, I'm at a, a bit of a loss because I feel like the proposal we put together last year would have been a pretty solid proposal that would have really moved us in a direction that accomplished the town hall item. The site was big enough that we actually thought we could get two buildings on there, but we didn't do a good job getting that out there. And really a small handful of people showed up and were able to rally enough support to kind of work against that. So how do we as a board start figuring out what is the right answer, the right solution, and what is a reasonable solution in a town like this because I my personal opinion is it's not a five million dollar building or a four million dollar building and I think we can find a solution that is reasonable affordable and meets the needs of this town I think you I think you're absolutely right and I think that's one of the discussions we're going to have to have when we do the uh, budget preparation uh, uh, starting right around the first of October Tracy you had a comment I think one of the challenges that we have, um, by the end of this year, interest rates will have risen another um, three times Federal Reserve rates. So I think one of the challenges that we have is I've, I've not seen us approach the residents of this town with a full comprehensive building plan of plant and property. Uh, we have approached three times, if I'm not mistaken, for a town hall upwards of, if I'm not mistaken, 3.5 times, five times we've approached upwards of the last study that I read um, in the material that John had given me when I was elected. I think it was $3.47 million for that building, if I recall. Three years ago. Or, yeah, years ago. Um, the library build is being proposed and will run over 5.6. Yeah, four, I think 4.6. 4. 4. Uh, at the all boards meeting, I think it was around 4.5. Anyway, let's move on, please. Anyway, the, the, point, the point being that at this stage, our only choice would be to put together a large comprehensive building plan and go forward with one bond. And I'm not sure because we function as different committees and boards that we 
have a cohesive thought process about that. Um, but the good thing is that by 2020, the bond on the middle school will be done. And so with some preparation, uh, I think you know we could approach this before interest rates rise to a point where it, it will absolutely um, skyrocket. Thank you. I, I think that's part of the thing we need to look at is when we sit down is are we going to go with a proposed uh, plan on front or are we going to do uh, a different program to build as we go? And uh, so that's something we're going to discuss on the day. you have a comment, please? Right. Right now, construction is booming. And you can't get help. And everyone is booked. And you can't get good prices right now. The people are, we only look at, you bid this for us. They have so much work already committed stuff they can't get to. So it's going to be tough this year. Well, that doesn't that doesn't excuse us from not doing, doing the job that we elected for. We're going to sit I know, down we have to drive and, and sit there the and put it out yeah. and let the public know exactly what we have. Any other comments? Yeah, Mrs. Hatch. Question? Please. Were you associated in Rochester when they did the bond, or was it Farmington that did the bond on several buildings? Um, I was in Nashville when we did a bond on 13 schools. I mean, you can you can do bonds on multiple yeah, buildings. What is is that a good idea? I mean, I know we're going to discuss it. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? It's it's a political question that uh, the board has to decide. As far as economics go, I think it's a good idea in terms of the economy of scale and of the bond. Uh, but it really comes down to. A, a political decision by the board as to whether or not they want to put them all together or not. Um, there are significant advantages to combining projects. In fact, like I said, th the reason there were 13 schools is because there were schools in each of the Alderman's districts. There was a new high school that they were building. They were renovating the old high school. They were putting up a middle school. I mean, they and they put it all together and the advantage a city has is all they had to get was nine votes of the 13 all well, it's something to talk about and, and i think it'll be, it'll be good for us we can really have a good healthy discussion especially when i see him tearing down and over high seems to be fun any other comments on, on this uh, moving on, is there any other uh, individual that would like to have a public comment, please? Seeing none, I will close public comments. Next is a review of the minutes for July 23rd, 2018. So moved. Were there, right. have been, were there corrections, additions, mm -hmm. alterations, or anything yeah, else? they've been done. Okay. Then I make a motion that we accept the, the uh, minutes of... July 23rd is written. Thank you. Do I have a second, please? I have a second, Mr. Hathcroft. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Bailey aye. Now aye. Hatch aye. Bear aye. Carter Cop aye. Motion carries 5 and 0. Thank you very much. Next, we have staff reports, administrative uh, scrutiny. Uh, you'll notice that the form for the MS 3rd 535 is in the signature folder. The 535 is a report on the year end financials and was. Uh, basically compiled by the auditor as part of the audit. Um, as I analyze what's been happening with fund balance based upon that, we've stayed within about $10,000 for the last three years after the setting a tax rate on a $4 million fund balance. So I think we're doing the, the, um, the policy on fund balance to stay stable at the midpoint in the range of what fund balance should be and to use excess uh, fund balance at the end of the year as a way of doing capital projects and investing in capital items. So the 535, I believe, shows good financial uh, management by the community. The MS1 is a record of assessment, primarily new construction, and it shows $24 million increase in total evaluation for the town, and that's on a billion dollars of total assessment for the town. So. Barrington has a billion dollars worth of property when you consider the value of all the houses and everything, and that does not count government buildings, churches, or other nonprofits. Uh, the dates for September and October, 
uh, Chairman Bailey has indicated he's going to be away September 10th, which is the planned September meeting, and would like to reschedule. The proposal is September 5th, which is a Wednesday, because that week has Labor Day on the 3rd, and Monday the 24th. And I would like to add Tuesday, October 9th, for budget purposes. The 8th is a holiday. I'd like to get started a little earlier on the budget. One of the reasons being what we discussed earlier is I think we're going to have at least one night where we really want to concentrate on, on buildings. And to make that schedule all work, I'd like to have the first budget meeting on Tuesday the 9th and um, re have the September meetings be the 5th and the 24th, if that meets with the board's approval. Comments on uh, my request and John's request? So you've taken out 910? We've taken out 910 if this is adopted. Is the fifth still on for the other meeting? I know no. I didn't clear that one from no. the calendar. So I no, clear that. Cl that's not going to work. Good. So, so it would be just a selectman's meeting on the fifth. That's another reason why I knew it was available, because we cleared another meeting that we thought we had. So September 5th is a Tuesday? September 5th a is Wednesday. a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. I didn't, uh, the, the Tuesday is a planning board meeting. Okay, and the 24th is what day? I Monday. Monday. Okay. And then the 9th of October is Tuesday again? Tuesday again That's because Monday, of, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. because of the, uh, it's because of the holidays in September and October, um, because of um, uh, George's travel schedule as well. It makes sense to do those three meetings on those dates. I hate to sound, I guess, bothersome about it, but do we really need to reschedule it? I mean, we all yeah, miss a meeting from time to time. Yeah, time, time. It was just a request to buy it. You know, it's up to the board. I'm just asking your adults to, to vote on it. Yeah. I just feel like we throw off the schedule enough around here, so trying to stay okay. consistent to that. So you're suggesting September 10th, but my request for the 9th was a different issue, so right. that would be an additional meeting. So we meet September 10th and then October 9th. Is that what you're suggesting, Andy? Yeah, I'm just saying let's stay with it. Stay with the 10th. Routine. But I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me one way or another. It just seems like from a, a consistency of purpose standpoint, mm -hmm. it makes more sense. The 9th we had um, reserved for a daytime meeting of another issue. October 11th seems to be the oh, date. Yeah, we got to talk okay. about it later. It's in October. We've okay. lost all the September dates. Okay. Um, so the I'm fine with the 10th of September and the 9th of October. Hmm, 9, 10, and 10, 9. Anybody object? I'm okay with it. So okay. Keep the September date, and we also go for the October 9th. So, at the end result, you we're adding one date in October for budget. Yeah, you get so, we have the October 9th. Huh? There's a date. The tenth, and the tenth remains the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, highway, highway dump truck. Uh, we have $55,000 remaining in state money that we have to use for a transportation project or uh, equipment, uh, and it must be used. Um, in a few months. Um, the balance in the highway capital reserve is sufficient for us to buy a new six-wheel dump truck replacing the 15-year-old dump truck. Um, I sent out the maintenance schedule. Um, the escalating costs on that, uh, on the oldest of our six-wheelers, I think it was over $12,000 uh, that we spent um, in just the, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the year. Um, the 2003 International, we spent 6515 5616 In 17, we spent uh, 38 and so far this year we spent 12350 It's 15 years. Um, usually trucks are figured on 10 years in replacement. Uh, we've actually got 15, but we need to start replacing all three of the oldest internationals. Um, I would like permission to go out, advertise to replace the truck. Um, I mean, you can keep putting money into it, um, uh, but it's also a reliability issue in the winter when you need to have it. Uh, so my suggestion is that we use that state money that we have coming in for transportation, put capital reserve money with it, and proceed to replace it. 
go out to bed and then they'll come to the board. John has made a request that uh, the board will authorize to uh, move forward. Would you have a discussion, please? Dan? Um, well, the new vehicles and stuff are not what they're supposed to be, it's up with all the emissions and stuff. And we take a look at having one set up to be reconditioned. Totally. See, we'll have to down the frame, redo it, new engine, new training, go we'll right through it. And it'll probably be 30, 40 grand. But we know what we have, we know what's wrong with the vehicle. Are you, are you suggesting you're replacing all of the hoses, all of the belts? Um, recondition. See what it would cost for recondition. Yeah. I think you're going to put a lot of money into a truck and still have an old truck. Yeah, but you can work on them in there. Know what's wrong with that well, I think that going there's a reason why the newer trucks are computerized fuel efficiency and air emissions. So, I think just sticking to this because they're more difficult to work upon. I mean, we can send it to the garage. That's what you do with uh, with my car. When I was a kid, I used to fix tractors all the time. You could do it easily. You know, the screwdriver and the wrench set. Uh, I now open my hood and I can check the oil and the fluid levels, and that's about it. I guess my comment is on it is if I look at the bills comparatively based on what I saw for bills, I mean, that's only what I've seen. There's three years of bills here, four years of bills here. Three, it, it seems like for the most part, we're spending about four grand a year in maintenance, pretty relative across every truck, no matter what it seems to be. So none of that really scares me from a maintenance standpoint. I, I don't think it's it's wild, and a couple of them say see invoice. Well, I don't know what was done on them because I don't know what the invoice says. But I'm not really scared by what I'm seeing from a maintenance standpoint at this point. Now, if we have more records, we could probably break this out in a way that would give us some better analytics to see where we we're leaning in the replacement cycle. But I don't see anything as I look across five different trucks that really is offensive or scary. Further comments? I support uh, a work program. You know, Chrome is beautiful, but we're not looking for a show truck. We're looking for a work truck. Just an opinion. Don, what's your opinion on new to old? New to old? Yeah. I, well, the only thing I say about it, I think you've got to look at more than just the plow, wing, sander, and hydraulics because it is in salt for at least four months of the, of the season, and that's very hard on frames and everything else. So I'm, I'm just saying I think you've got to go beyond maintenance. You've got to go to, uh, like I said, salt is a enemy of a piece of steel. Oh, yeah. uh, Peter, I have a question for you. What's the condition of the frame? If somebody brought up the frame. What's the condition of that? Could you help us? I need Peter at the mic. Yes, we do. <laughs> The frame is on them and the frame is rusted, just like the body is. I mean, my dog said during the salt four months out of the year. Every time we come back at the end of a storm, we wash them, but they're, they're still, the frame is rusted. We have them on a 10 year cycle for a reason. I understand and, that. And that's, oh, was, that's, just, was just somebody asked the question, I want to give yeah, you a chance no, to answer no, it. Yeah. The, 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 the frame's rusted, the body's rusted, it, it, it is what it is. And then your question about chrome. Chrome is actually cheaper because if you have the painted wheels, you paint them at least twice a year, and the paint is 100 bucks a gallon. That's why we went with Chrome because we don't have to paint them. Does anybody else have any other questions of Peter? No, I just wanted to note it was difficult to see as I was looking at the breakdown. Thank you for sending that. There was it certainly was a difference between like tires that were needed, oil changes that were needed, and repairs that were needed. So um, consider going forward if you want to categorize the two separately so that we're able to actually see the cost of the repairs. So I, uh, so I think that what we should do is get, get a little bit. Oh, I, I, can I speak too? Yeah, you may. I, just, I, I was, but at the rate you hopped in there, I thought you were moving on. 
Well, no, 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 see, I, I, I slowed down a little bit today. No, what I'm thinking is that I would ask to have a, uh, a better sheet, more complete, and uh, we can give us an idea of what we, what we need to have on it. Please go ahead. I agree with you on that. And then, secondly, I was going to ask, could, could we, I mean, Dan brought up the idea of getting it reconditioned. Could we get a cost on what it would take to recondition a truck? I mean, if it's, if we've got $50,000 that we have to use up, this might be a good way to buy some time on that truck, give us five, six, seven more years or so out of it. And then also, um, I know we've used up a lot of our paving but I know the end of Beauty Hill is still a hot mess, and that's an area where we had to put cones out and all kinds of other stuff the last, like, 400 feet because of the frost teams this past year. Any other? Yeah, if I could, um, frost teams happen every single year, um, and they happen all over town. This was one of the worst years we've had because we had uh, 70 degrees in February and freezing in the winter. Um, we can't control frost eaves. Um, we are three trucks behind. We were on a 10-year schedule. We've tried to follow the capital reserve plan or the capital improvement plan, but we never do. And this is one of those things that we never do it with. Um, you know, I mean, it is, it is what it is. We were on a 10-year cycle. Like I said, we've got three trucks that have passed that 10-year cycle. This truck has been the most expensive. We spent 28000 in the last four years, five years, on repairs on this truck, um, and that's where we stand. Um, we have uh, the strobes. We had a strobe, couple of strobes out the other day, and we can't buy strobes. They don't make that kind anymore. And you have to have the strobes in the winter. So I mean, it, it is getting outdated. There are things that are getting outdated, and and that's why that's why we look at this avenue. So why why don't we just go ahead? And get, thank you, Peter. Why don't we just uh, 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 move this on, and we'll have John provide us uh, with the information that was requested, and we can have a discussion uh, later on. I think it's important that we know how many are out of the 10-year cycle, and I think it's important to separate out the difference between maintenance and repairs on these so that we could have a better picture. I mean, the first thing my eyes went to was the cost for tires, and I was like, I'm not really sure I can consider that because tires are needed every couple of years on every vehicle. So could we possibly come back with a, a better breakdown of that? Um, it's, I'm, I'm not against replacing trucks that need to be replaced. I think it's important, and certainly the residents of this town <coughs> very much appreciate having their roads clear um, and, and the safety that's involved in the winter time. So I, I just think we need more information. Okay, I think that that will be our conclusion. And we'll get some more information. So yes, Peter. Yeah. So what you're saying is. What you're saying is, don't count what we spend on oil and filters and tires on on the, on, the, on the truck. You want to know what we spend in what we repair. Yes, right. alternators and and motors and yes. and yeah, rear ends and That's transmissions right. and clutches yes. and brakes. And, yes, and, 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 and if you want to, we appreciate that very much. Actual repairs. Yep. It's not it's not probably brakes wouldn't even go in there. Yeah, brakes wouldn't go in there, tires wouldn't go in there. Like those are all things that are general maintenance items. You want to uh, they're wear they're considered wear items. Wear I would consider lighting to be wear items. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. Bulbs, I, things I, like I that fit. I want to know what the actual repairs to the vehicle are. Yeah. It, if you I think what everyone's asking Pete is if uh, if you could better detail out what the actual items were and then try and off like in the column next to it just put was it a, a maintenance, a replacement, a wear item? Figure out whatever, what you think is probably the best way to classify it um, is standard maintenance, like, or, but I'm, I'm not articulating this as clearly as I want right now. If, if tomorrow afternoon, so Peter, you could come down, we'll work on it. <coughs> no more wear and tear. But in the morning, we're doing computer stuff, but in the afternoon, if you could come by. Well, Excuse me, Mrs. Hatch has a comment, please. Against having the fleet up-to-date. 
quality is what you want in the tire. All right, so we'll move this on. Everybody has anything else they want to add to that list before we go that we haven't already spoken about? Um, I think we should talk about whether the new model is more fuel efficient. No, we can. We can and I think if the new model is more fuel efficient, that offsets some of the cost right there. Very well, that's good. Any other comments, please? Right, I'm going to turn it back over to John for his report. Okay, the next item has to do with the police station upgrade. Uh, we do not have the money to pay for the one firm responding to the bid. It came in much higher than the funds we have available, so we cannot proceed with that. My suggestion is that the town hire a fire protection engineer um, as uh, it's in the $1,500 range. We develop the spec that we put it out to bid, that we understand that this would be a winter project. Right now, the builders are busy and it's harder to get. That would be an inside project. And then we see how to proceed. But until we get better specs, I think it's very, well, I was told by several um, that they couldn't develop specs. They couldn't develop a bid until they had better specs. Comments from the board, Tracy? I thought that we had $100,000 set aside for this project and this bid came in at 81. No, no, we had um, uh, something in the uh, 40, 30 to 40 range. I would, uh, if, if something to consider tonight, do you want to vote on whether to uh, accept the bid or to, to uh, not, not, not accept the bid? I would think about not to accept the bid since okay. we can't afford it. Okay. Dan? I'll make a motion not to accept the bid. I have a motion on the table not to accept the bid. That was 80 grand. What? Yep. I'm, I'm trying to remember if a blank seen, and I don't remember seeing the information. Now, it may just be I've gotten 600 emails since that point, so. Which which information? We put out an RFQ. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Before we go any further, we have a motion on the table. I need to either have a second or not have a second, then I'll open up for discussion. Do I have a second on Dan's motion? I'll second no. the motion so we can have discussion. Okay, we have, we have a second not to accept the bid. Okay, now open for discussion. Mr. Knapp. Now, I, I don't remember seeing what came back on the RFP. Uh, we opened the bids. Last meeting we opened the bids and when we opened the bids that was the one bid we had was 80. Right, but I thought we sent it off to be looked at. Yeah, we did. We looked at the price and said it doesn't it's way out of line of what we can afford. Okay. But none of the information on it was sent around. No. Okay. Because the dollar number was, you know, much higher than we could afford. I I really struggle with the if we can afford it part. I think we can afford it. It's just are we willing to pay it? Well, you'd have to take money from a bunch of other lines in the the budget. There, are, there is not money currently budgeted. We have a, a, a building preservation fund that has in the thirty thousand range. I don't know the exact number, um, but other than that, the only way you could do it is if you were to identify and find fifty thousand dollars in the current budget that wasn't going to be expended, and then set that aside. Um, so that's why, and, and frankly, I'm convinced that that bid is way higher than what the project would actually cost because without a clear set of specs, I think that someone threw a very high number at it thinking that they got it, they were in fine shape, and if not, then they weren't out anything. That's my, that's my read on the situation. Um, we, have, uh, we have not... Uh, I think we need to develop a clearer spec that we have everyone bid on. There was a question on a $100,000 sprinkler system that might have to go in and not go in. Right. And until that question is answered, I don't see how anyone can bid on this project. So I think we need to answer that question next. The, the whole point was of my comment here is that we're making a vote on something that we haven't actually processed any of the information on. Do you want to see a copy of what went into the 80000 or? I, I would like to know what sure. what was submitted. I'll send out copies of the uh, of the bid. Jim, that the, the quote was kind of open too, to my understanding and stuff. So they could add on extras and stuff. I don't know. Unforeseen things, stuff. Uh, Unofficially, I. Where did where, where are you getting that from? I, I, I talked to the that. police chief. Oh. It's up, and there was some open-ended things on it. Well, that, that, should, that should have come through the town administrator, but it's all right. 
Yeah. We, I'll send I'll send a spec out, but um, do you want to not delay a decision then for tonight from tonight so that you see the see the the spec? You, like you just told us you can't afford this. There's no That's money in the budget for That's this. Correct. So correct. our vote can only go one, one way direction. and still be good fiduciary agents to the town. So um, my concern though is twofold. If you bring in the, the engineer and we need a fire suppression system and it is $100,000, now you're talking about identifying a safety issue that you now need to address and don't have the money for in the budget. Well, it, 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 my understanding is until you pull a permit, you don't have to, you're grandfathered until such point as you do work on the, on the building and the question becomes, does the work on the building trigger the sprinkler system or not. But on the other hand, if it is a potential safety issue, we should know so that we can put it as a warrant article next year. That's all part of this. You know, a, to me, having a detailed spec and understand what it is, if this is going to be sixty to eighty thousand dollars, or if you have to put a sprinkler and do this, you're looking at one hundred and eighty. We need to take that to the voters next year, and it's part of this overall building facility, and we need the question answered in order to do the facility study. If, if we turn around and we had that information when we sat down in October and we started to work our plan, at least, at least we would have an idea of what we're going to be asking for. It gives us a better uh, idea, it gives us more information, and as such we can prepare a better budget for the voters. And that's, that's how I look at it. Dan? Here's another idea for the board. Put the speaker, please. I have another idea for the board. Once you find out the scope of work, because uh, that it, we put out the bid, but we might want to be our own general contractor and hire out on it. We have a maintenance officer uh, person, and we have the chief of police that could oversee it and report back to us. Because the way, the way the work schedule, the workload, and stuff, it might be cheap up for us to hire. Bring That'll be good for further discussion. I think that we will have that down the road. But right now, we're at uh, whether to uh, continue to. Uh, you want a cable for next week? Oh, no. we're, we're working. We a motion. The, the motion, motion is to right now. reject the police Except. station bid. So we, and that's that's it. Is there any further discussion on that? If there isn't, anybody have a vote? Dan? Here I. Hardikoff I with severe reluctance. <laughs> Make that two, a hatch, two. It's three, and I feel the same way. And we need to have more information on this Bailey I. So five of us turned down the bid, and we just say, John, that we really need to get uh, together with uh, more information on it. And if you could get the uh, copy of the bids out to everybody, would be appreciated. I will get copies of the bids to everybody. Do you want me to get the fire protection engineer to develop a better spec as to what we need and what's going to have to be done? So now we have another request on the well, board. How would the board feel about it? Dan? I'll make the motion. We don't have the money for this. There we go. Well, we have the money for the fire protection engineer. $1,500. Could we listen to what Rick has got to say? Fire chief, please. So, so I encourage you to spend fifteen hundred dollars and have a fire protection engineer look at what you're trying to do. If if we are non-compliant, we cannot be more non-compliant. In other words, if that building needs to be sprinkled because of construction changes, or if it's non-compliance now, you can't make that building more non-compliant. So what should have happened a long time ago was a fire protection engineer look at what we're trying to do and determine whether, the big question is really whether that building needs to be sprinkled or, not, or whether it should have been sprinkled years ago. So. I, I think before you go anywhere, you, you folks need to spend the money to get
get a fire protection engineer to look at it and tell you what you have to do from a fire protection standpoint so that somebody can bid the job. I don't, if, so let's just, we'll back up. If, so if you would have accepted that other bid and they would have come in and, and done all the work and then the fire marshal's office comes in and says, uh, you have to do X and it's not in compliance, then now, you, we don't want to find out after the fact that we're not in compliance, and that's my point. It would appear to me that we know what the building code is, and we know that we're going to require a suppression system. That's not necessarily true, because the, the fire code is based on a, a number of different factors, and if I you know, I'm not going to be the one to inspect that and decide whether we're in compliance or not. I'm going to call the fire marshal's office and they will come down and decide whether we're in compliance or not. But they're not coming down now and tell us whether we're in compliance. They're coming at the end. And if we're in compliance, we're okay. If we're not in compliance, we're not. There, there's some question about whether or not that building is required to be sprinkled because of the use of that building. And it's, 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 it's as clear as mud in my opinion. Because if, if the police station, the police side of the building is considered a detention facility, which it could be, then it has to be sprinkled but there's some question on what a detention facility actually is. It's not, it's not black and white. Well, I, I would like, to, does anybody else have any other questions to the fire chief? You have a question for the fire chief? No. Okay, that's, that's what I'm asking for now. Chief, thank you very much. All right, now we're, we're at, we know it's gonna cost us approximately $1,500. A motion was made, it's been seconded. Is there other, any other discussion on the motion made by Dan? No, no. I, I, I just mean, I only had a second. You did. No, I had a second the other one, but I, I second this one. Okay, what, what, was, what was the motion? I make a motion to have a second hundred dollars. Accurate to estimate on the cost. Oh, to, okay. 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 Get roughly fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, roughly. I want the word yeah, roughly, roughly in there because it could come to some different number. Okay, I, I have a second. I have a motion. I have a second. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Should it be from, a cutoff? Beyond the 15, well, when it's roughly 1500 if it's 2000 I'm coming back to the board. Right. Okay. Hey, all right. So he occupies that space and he gets to speak. I agree with the 1500 bucks to have the fire protection engineer look at it, sign off on it, and know that I plan on taking that and working with the fire chief and contacting the fire marshal's office ourselves. So before we do one thing of renovation, I want an answer from the fire marshal's office myself. Before we spend any money renovating that building, if we now know that in the end, the fire marshal's coming, because we're gonna call. So let's just do that on the front end before we make one change. That's my suggestion, and I agree with that. <coughs> we may, this is the other piece, is I hand drew a rough draft based on our lean process. I never brought it to an architect or an engineer or a draftsman just to reduce my handwritten rough draft to an actual plan. Could we go as high as 2,500 to account for maybe a thousand bucks, which is what I'm being told it would cost, to take my rough draft and actually put it to a better drawing of size to give to a fire protection engineer than my hand-drawn rough draft. Or is it 1,500 and we're done? If it's 1,500, I'll continue to march my hand-drawn rough draft out there. Comments? Dan, um, if, if you whoever we consult with, they can go in there, look at your rough draft, look at the building, and then they can make it one themselves. 
put their price and give them a rough idea. Well, they're gonna give us a quote, a recommendation. They're gonna show us what they want to say. Tracy, at a bare minimum, we have the responsibility to bring this building up to a safe work environment, and we already know that the eighty-one thousand dollar quote we received is outside of the scope of the money that we have available. If we don't go ahead with what the police chief has recommended, which is to get the architectural design in place to send out with the RFP, then again, we're going to potentially end up with the situation where the bid is priced outside of what we can afford to pay again. So I think what the chief is recommending should be the second thing that we vote on after this vote takes place. And we wouldn't do those design until the fire protection engineer has indicated that that's going to yes. be acceptable. All right, we have a motion to spend uh, rough, roughly <laughs> spend <laughs> up to fifteen hundred dollars or approximately. Right. Bailey, aye. Approximately. Aye. 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 Five. Five. Approved. Motion Injured. carries. Now, do, Ms. Hidecroft, you have something you'd like to say, please? Yes, please. I would like to accept the police chief's recommendation to have the architectural designs drawn up, spending up to $3,000, so that when we send out a bid, we send out an RFP to get bids, we get something ac accurate. I'll second that. I, I think that was after verification that the fire protection Yes, engineer. after we get back the fire protection so also total. second that aspect of it. Roughly total and further discussion is that roughly that three grand is that roughly second three grand total for everything for the architectural design 1500 she said up, up to 1500 dollars yeah i don't think it's going to cost that i think it's going to cost about 1500 but so that the police chief doesn't have to keep coming back meeting right. after meeting for this can we give some scope grace okay yeah. any other discussion on this motion take a vote i don't think it was second it was that was sure. by me thank you chair person here aye article five that by Haley, i motion carries by a vote i i would also just like to make a comment that uh I'm as competent as I know our police chief is. I do not think making him wield a gun or a tool belt is the best use of him as a resource for a DC project. Make use of one. All right, let's move on, John. Um, one of the areas that um, is of concern going forward is the amount of area that recreation has for their summer camp in the field that they work in especially if the library reduces that space with the work that they're doing. So the suggestion has been made that we flag the wetlands behind the library gym area to see if we can expand the fields in that direction. There have been those who say there are wetlands there, there have been those who say no, we can fill it and level it and enlarge the area that REC has for the field. I'd like to have a wetland scientist go in and look at that piece of land to see what options are available for the town behind the library rec building. Is that cost going to come out of the uh, recreation? Well, we're not sure that recreation would be the one that was using it. I was suggesting that it come out of um, the uh, town funds, but if you want to request rec to do it out of the revolving fund, I that's just a voice. Just a question. To I. I was planning on taking it out of town funds. Dan, uh, when I became a select, when I became a selectman, I went to talk to Tara about that. You know, well, bad because when the construction goes on up above, they're going to be they give them more room. The construction is right against the. Uh, everyone. We're talking about putting money aside to have it fly. When we get the wetland study done and stuff, we determine where the wetlands are. The rec department and the town should look. If we're gonna put any structures in there, in there, when we fill it in, put structural fill in them areas that we're gonna build on, and in other areas that we're not gonna build on, ball field and stuff can put overburden from the streets, from other projects around town. But if we're gonna do any work there later on, we should put structural fill in them areas. 
before we start, before we but that all has to do with the stuff. Before we right. start, we should have it flagged so we know we're, what we're starting with. So the so the uh, I'll make a motion to have it flagged. The, what's the estimated cost, John? Um, I do not know. I mean, I can get that for the next meeting. Uh, you, okay, did, 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 would you agree? Can you vote to remove your motion? Yeah, I, I will. The motion was removed, so we're going to have a figures on that for the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Move, John, please move on. Um, uh, the question was raised on whether or not the board wishes to reactivate the water committee to review water resources in town. There was one a decade ago um, that uh, was looking into water issues. It has not been active since I've been here for the last seven years. Uh, George, as you know, you're the one who asked to have it brought up, and the question becomes, does the board wish to reactivate that committee? Well, one of the reasons I asked to have that committee reactivated is because our surrounding towns are now working on using more of our water than what we really should be, in my opinion, not the board's opinion that we should give up. And I think that uh, the Water Committee before kept an eye on uh, items that were uh, the towns that were drilling and using the water for aquifer. And they do own, Rochester owns a couple of parcels that they would have the right to uh, do that. And I think that if we had a Water Committee that would be actively uh, looking into that and uh, monitoring it, it would be better off for us to have more information when it comes time to uh, work on the project. As everybody is currently aware of, we have the, the Long Pond issue that's coming up and the Conservation Commission is working with that. And I think that we need to have uh, uh, more of an independent group that would do it. And uh, because of uh, certain controls beyond the uh, town's control that uh, became stagnant and kind of just disappeared and fell apart. So that was one of the questions I had asked John, should we reactivate it or not? John has uh, graciously brought it up in his report tonight for discussion. What is, do they have a mission? Are they charged with a, some goals, objectives, something to at least outline what their scope is? Yeah, they, and if I had uh, read fully down past the uh, line, I would have been able to bring the uh, goals from the last committee. But I can uh, get it together and uh, uh, being prepared for it. I, I apologize for not being prepared for this. But they do have goals and they had everything else. They had to uh, monitor the wells and everything else. I think it would be important to see meeting minutes and know what they worked on and why it was disbanded so we could figure out um, the value of it. But I, will, I, will get with, I will get with Suzanne, uh, uh, Ms. Hanacroft, and uh, I will uh, put, put that together and work with that package. Dan? The only towns are watershed supplies. Yes. How many? No, 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 no. I have the list at home, but I don't know offhand how many we supply. A lot. Well, how many is a lot then? We got Rochester. I just need a number. Uh, I mean, oh, I'm you, sorry. you supply some in Lebanon, Maine, actually. Yeah, and we do. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I, roughly eight to, eight to 12. It, 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 we we are a water so, resource rich community. So would that be acceptable to the board for uh, myself to work with Suzanne and pull that together and have a pack for everybody? Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, proposed town seal policy. Uh, does the board wish to adopt the policy? George. Chair Bailey, this is the policy that I have written and given yes. to you. And so, okay, I thought at the last meeting that the decision was made. That I, I was surprised it was being reintroduced. I thought the decision had been made two or three meetings ago of what to do in dealing with the town truck, and then what to do in dealing with T-shirts, and then I think we basically took this proposed policy and uh, am I wrong in saying no, that? Not, no, I, okay. I thought we had settled it so I was actually surprised to see it reintroduced although quite frankly I think it's very well written but you know yes. very well written. <laughs> that's just me not being very humble isn't it um, but I don't I, I got the impression a few meetings ago that we had kind of said 
we've settled this if, issue. If we're ready to move on, I'm fine. I had made a note to bring it up at this okay. meeting because of uh, the fact when it was. Okay, uh, if I may, the appointment to the ABC. Uh, Are you perplexed? Would you make the decision how to get into the situation? Yeah, I'm not perplexed. Yeah. I, I was oh. thinking, yeah. oh. No, I, I was all right with it. The only thing I saw out of it was. Uh, um, I didn't know if we necessarily needed to segregate them out because I think pretty much all the vehicles have the town seal on them anyway, with the exception of maybe the police department. But this I know the fire department this, this has them on all the proposed, and we just said no, we don't need a town yeah. policy. On this. Right, so I, agree. I don't think we need. Right. To I think I think we're fine the way we are. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Good. Um, next Bradley item, uh, Bradley yes. Bork volunteered to serve on the ABC. He couldn't make this meeting. Does the board wish to proceed to appoint him or wait until he can attend a select board's meeting? I'd like to put a face with a name. Can I tell you a little bit about the gentleman? So the gentleman is um, from the Air Force. He lives here in town with his family. He is volunteering because part of his regular duties with the Air Force is to deal with all of the contracting on the base, and I think he could be a strong um, asset to the advisory budget. And I can tell you the advice the ABC can't use another person. I think so, Ms. Hatch. addressed it him very nicely, and you know, and I'm willing to go on the opinion. I just, you know, I like when I see someone, I like to be able to say hello, not say no. <laughs> Well, following our typical policy, they usually fill out an application with a yeah. resume and then submit oh, that into us. Yeah. You didn't, I, submit, I think you got it a couple, a few weeks ago. I think I sent it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw it. Right. It was attached, it was part of one of those DES things, I yeah. think. Uh, well, he just I, was unavailable for this meeting. Yeah, I'm fine with it. So does it I, I, I remember seeing it did go well, but it was with some other stuff, so it might have been overlooked. Do you want a motion? Yeah. Okay, I make a motion. Oh, excuse me, I have one question. Does anybody want to go to a non-public session to discuss this chip, this individual? If they, if you want to go to a non-public session, please raise your hand. If not, I will consider that nobody wants to go to a non-public session. So that's it. Okay, so now can I make my motion? We have a motion? Yeah, well, I'm trying to make one. Oh, I thought you... No. Uh, I make a motion that we accept Bradley Borg as uh, a volunteer to serve on the ABC. One, one year term motion. One year. It means it ends in March. Oh, Mr. Nett, Mr. Yep. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Five carries? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Please pull the mic over. When you brought up we're going to non public and stuff, we offended someone here one night to make them and they feel really uncomfortable. If they I don't think we should bring that up every time, every member. I, I, I do not agree with you because I, I, I think that there are times when an individual uh, comes before us and I don't want to take a chance of anybody on the board have a derogatory statement that could in fact hurt the individual so that's well, what well, we did the one the guy here one night well the, we're not we're talking about the current we're not talking about the past please Dan. but, but I, I but if, if we have a concern we can bring it up then but we I got the no, I read, you, I read can, the you cannot you cannot bring a concern up of an individual that's before us to be part of the committee yeah but I get the information prior I read it I, I didn't see it in an email. I read it. I, it nothing raised anything to me. Thank you very much. I think what Chairperson Bailey is trying to say is if we are aware of an adverse circumstance with someone who has put themselves in a volunteer capacity in front of us, we can't publicly share it, but we do have a responsibility to share it as a board before voting someone on to that volunteer role. And the only way to go about that seems to be saying, do we need to enter non-public? Oh, we need. Am I wrong in saying yeah, that? No. Okay. That's, that's why we're doing it. That's why we do that. So we have the individual. It's protection for everybody. Moving on, John. Uh, was there a vote on that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm done with my report. Could I add one thing to his report? 
I'm not usually cold, but I'm froze. Well, shut that off. And, uh, those mash I don't care if it's down. It's just, it, I, I walked in and I was like, but I'm sitting right here, so. I'm trying to make a short name. Keep it going. It starts <laughs> snowing in the room. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Moving on with uh, Suzanne. Thank you very much. All Suzanne, I have please. is um, payroll manifest dated um, August 5th and vendor manifest dated August 8th. That's it. Okay. How so much quieter this way? Oh, Any comments? Seeing none. Move on to old business. Old business, the first item on this police station upgrade. Which we just handled. We just handled. Does anybody have any objections to that? Any other old business to be discussed? Seeing that, move on to the new business, Water Committee. Water Committee was discussed. Is there any further discussion? I just think that we need to have an independent Water Committee who answers for itself, not answers under someone else. The, 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 that that was the whole idea was to have a committee that, that water committee to answer to the board right yeah well I'm do, I don't mean that but I think if you're gonna have a chairman or whatever of this committee then he should control the committee I don't mean control the committee but I mean I understand he not it shouldn't go back every time part of the reason that that did not keep going was there was too many chiefs and not enough Indians. And I know that for a fact because my son was on the board. And believe me, I heard it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I know for a fact that he's absolutely right because I was there with him. I know. And yep. it, it wasn't just his opinion, but he figured he could tell me anything. <laughs> so, is, there any, is, there any other, is there any other articles under new business, please? Can I ask a real quick question? So in my research, what years are we looking at? I, mean, I, I, I will come by with my phone and I'll show you. Okay, so you I, have, I still have the phone. Okay. That's why I'll bring it by. It didn't last very long, I didn't. No. Yeah, it lasted, it lasted long enough to be a pain in the side oh, for okay. several people. And, <laughs> and then then we had some untimely uh It was crossovers. long by the time I arrived in yeah. 2011. Yes. I think oh. it's very important that you <coughs> set the rules and that's the way they're going to be. Uh, on the too many people crossed over on the committee, too, so that was it. Yes, Ms. Hagra. In reference to the town administrator's report, should you re be reporting out publicly the response on Swains Road and the letters that were sent out? Uh, I will. Um, I've, I've indicated to most of the people who responded to me via email that um, the overwhelming response was no. I didn't have anyone that said they wanted to have a betterment assessment. Okay. And they said it's public too. That's helpful. I do have a meeting with the Joshua who's been coming in here and mm -hmm. somebody else on Wednesday. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And the, uh, okay. Malago and Hard Rock were both on here. Uh, Malago, we're getting more information. Um, I need a better answer from DOT before I'm ready to recommend a policy on that one. And Hard Rock, the public partner, private partnership, uh, was very successful with TurboCam. Um, the town kept three lots, which they said they uh, TurboCam subdivided, built a road. They still have two more lots that they can build on. Right now, we're receiving two hundred and thirty-seven thousand five hundred a year in taxes out there on that property, and one hundred and fifty-six as of uh, last week newly created jobs. So that public-private partnership went very well. The town has a similar one in which it's engaged with Hard Rock. Uh, that is now in the planning stages. Uh, there's a long ways to go before it completes the uh, planning process. I think they're meeting again in October on the planning board, so that's uh, under consideration. And I would point out that in Barrington as a whole, with the addition of them as a business entity here, there's over 500 jobs. Mm -hmm. Are you speaking of, of Turbo King? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Turbo King is it. Can you? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, hey, just a minute. Can you clarify I, something? Just, one second, please. John, I'd like for you to, uh, you know, put that together and uh, uh, 
we, we, we have it on our website just as okay. it is, okay. but I can change the format. Why don't you come in and tell me? Oh, okay, well, I'll come, in, I'll come in in the morning and we'll work on it. Dan? Uh, I have an 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, um, I appreciate that. I'm a simple person. I get kind of confused. This hard rock and public partnership and Cheryl can. These are two separate things. Mm -hmm. It should be it like or same. You, you're referring to hard rock to Cheryl can. But they, it's Turbo very Cam. much the same situation. For Turbocam, we provided the land, they did the development. For Hard Rock, we're providing the land, they're doing the development. We got 50% of the lots with Turbocam. Under Hard Rock, we're getting 50% of the uh, income. We got 10,000 yards of gravel from Turbocam for the development. Uh, we're going to get a share of the rock sales from Hard Rock. So there's a, well, I, a comparison between the two that I, they're both public-private partnerships with very similar, with yeah. some similarities. There are some differences, obviously, but that's where we're at right now. Dan, Dan that, that's why I asked John if we could sit down and put this together in a different format so it makes it easier for all of us to understand. And that's the reason why I'm going to go in there and, and do that. I myself agree with that's you. That's your opinion, but what, 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 I, you a couple hours. If, if you don't want to give me the, the, the no, I'm not even going to go down that road. I was just giving my opinion, and that's your actually opinion. what I was doing on asking to have this redone. And yes, Dan, you have another question? No, I was talking. You, 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 you no. interrupted. You have a question? No. Okay, Ms. Hardcraft. Just so I understand, the town is collecting two hundred and thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars in tax revenue every year from the turbo. Cam um, properties? Just, no, just, just the building one. on Redemption. Just, just that, that one building, we're co collecting two hundred and thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars mm -hmm. in yes. cash revenue on that one building. Thank you. I I hope people that are watching publicly are aware of that. I had seen a, a thread recently where uh, people were under the mistaken impression we were not collecting any taxes <laughs> on that. Thank you. And that may be with the old assessed value too, John. Do you think? Um, I, I, I'm not sure that the new construction is in that number. So that's, it could be even more. It could be more. I, I, I'm, I'm uh, sure that once we yeah, get yeah. everything together, and they we'll have to figure the building permits. What's that? And they pay daily for the building permits. Oh, the building permits were like 50000 or something like that. I know. I mean, the building, I mean, that has been a very profitable public private partnership for the town. I mean, we would hope that when we finish the development of the industrial commercial park that's going to be behind Liberty Truck that we would have similar um, profitability for the town in terms of tax revenue and jobs. That's the reason we entered into it. It's not that it's profitable, it's that uh, the money that is collected helps offset the residential burden of taxpayers. Uh, thank you. So profit was not the profit right word. Profit is not the right word for that. Mm -hmm. and, and and I will say that, um, you know, a lot of people do not think about the fact that when you look at the total impact, that's $237,000 on one building. There are two buildings that TurboCam has in Barrington. That's the smaller. Putting it close to almost half a million dollars yep. in taxes for two buildings. you got to build a lot of houses to offset the difference of two buildings. That have no impact on the school, no impact on the transfer station, and provide 500 jobs. It, right, and provide 500 jobs in the community. Yeah. Any further comments from the uh, new business? I may be biased. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, I, if I were you, I would be the same way also. So, anything else on the new business? I do. Um, I would like to bring up. We last year we redid the culvert going across Young Road. And if anybody has been down past there, um, where they didn't take out a lot of rock along what would be the, I guess it would be the northwest side, or the east, technically the east side, I guess it is. Nearer, where, or, no, or nearer the Swains Lake. It would be the Lake. west side. Nearer yeah. Swains Lake. No, near, go, heading up toward the pond that sits up behind there. The developed there. side. The developed side, yes. Okay. Yeah, the developed um, side. If you look at it now, that is relatively all filled in there, and I know that was an item that Casey had brought up is a big concern when he was on the board, and it was an item I know a few of us were concerned about, is that all of that is filled in there. It's been less than a year since it was done, which to me really says that they didn't take enough material out of there because 
when the water runs down through there, it is perfectly filled in, and now the water tracks across the road. And with all the heavy rain, you can see evidence of that down in through that area. Um, can, can I ask Peter, didn't you meet with Joseph or someone out there about what needs to be done? Can you comment on where we're at with that um, status? We've been waiting for the guardrail company to come take out 30 feet of guardrail so we can pull that cement out of there so the ditch line will continue down on that side. So they are going to dig, dig yeah, that out. Yeah, we've got a plan. Okay. Yep. Good. Yeah. That's good to hear because yeah, nice. yep. I hadn't heard anything on it. And coming by, I was concerned about it. And I know we're nearing the one-year mark on that. So. It's taken longer than we thought it should. Okay. Dan, you had a comment? All set now. Pardon? I'm all set now. All right. Is there any other further new business? Seeing none, we'll go on to uh, select person's report. Selectman Ayer? Um, the town planning committee uh, met and then um, we discussed some of the properties up and we tried to get a uh, group of people together last Saturday but everyone was on vacation and our prior commitments. So um, the chairman will be talking to Suzanne maybe tomorrow and try to get it one night this week. And we posted. And then the conservation wouldn't have a meeting. Ms. Hockroft. Recreation Department did not have a meeting. They have um, sent out uh, material for their meeting on the 20th, which I will not be able to attend since I will be here. Uh, there is one week left of the summer camp and then a week in between school, and I think then the kids are headed back to school. Thank you. Don? <coughs> the zoning board has <coughs> three hearings that they're going to be addressing on the 18th. The fourth hearing has been withdrawn by the applicants. All three deal with uh, front setbacks, perimeter buffers, uh, and uh, so there are issues that need to be addressed, but there are setbacks issues on all three cases. And that is at 7 o'clock on August, she's got down 15th, so I know Barbara knows well, it's this Wednesday, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this month. So that's what they're doing. Thank you very much, Mr. Knapp. Planning Board um, had a meeting last Tuesday. Um, we had um, two design reviews. Um, there was uh, talk of a continuance that uh, which was with the town Liberty truck, but that didn't um, go anywhere. And then uh, there was also um, a potential request for extension that was withdrawn, so we didn't have to deal with it. And that was everything that was covered at the planning board meeting. Thank you, and I hadn't attended any other meetings, so I don't have anything to report. I want to thank everyone for doing a wonderful job you've done. Uh, next, we have our last public comment. So anybody has a comment? Seeing none, I'll move on uh, to the uh, request for a non-public uh, session tonight. After a non-public session, if it's approved, there will be no uh, comments coming out of it. As I say, it's strictly on a personnel and reputation. That's what we're going to be discussing tonight. I want to thank everybody for coming here. And uh, I'm looking for the board to give me a uh, motion to go into non-public session for personnel and reputation. So moved. Second it. Bailey, aye. Aye. Hatch, aye. Protocol, aye. There are. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. I appreciate everybody coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Chief Matt, two minutes here. An hour and 20 minutes. Thank you.